All right, you can all sit down now. You know, this year, I have spent quite a bit of time teaching on gratitude. And November is Gratitude Month. So we spend the entire month of November focusing on the things that we're grateful for. But this year, 2020, the year of COVID, this is the year of social distancing, this is the year of lockdowns and lots of crazy and unusual events, it's given me a sense of that gratitude is more important now than it ever has been. Let's face it, the reality is that we have a lot to complain about, don't we? I mean, we could be disgruntled about all kinds of things, but focusing on the negativity produces negative fruit. And for those of us in recovery, we need to surround ourselves with reasons not to act out rather than reasons to act out. And that's where gratitude comes in. We're in the thick of the season of the holidays. And this, for, the, for many, this is a season of, of good tidings and joy. But for some of us, the holidays are tough, aren't they? Yeah. They're memories of losing a loved one. It's especially personal for my wife and I. Um, my wife lost her brother just a year ago in October. And just, and it, just before Halloween... And uh, she lost an uncle to alcoholism in December 17th, 2002. My dad died on, in 2015 on December the 20th, um, which is, was really hard. So this is tough. Now, others of you are here tonight. You have memories of these crazy, drunken family fights and lots of dysfunction. Some of the worst episodes of domestic violence occur over the holidays. And some of you have memories of having very, very little to celebrate. And others had plenty growing up. And if I were to ask each of you, you could all reflect on some bad memory of some type that you can recall happening o over the holidays. However, Thanksgiving is that one time of year that most of us are able to set aside all of our problems and, and give thanks for what we have and the family that we're with. And even for those less fortunate, Thanksgiving is a time when they can get together and have a good old-fashioned turkey dinner at a local shelter or an event like Metro Thanksgiving that we have each year. Normally, we would be having that. By the way, what we're doing this year is we're actually delivering Thanksgiving to all kinds of families all over in, in downtown, which is a huge deal. You know, most families can have one day a year that they can reflect on the good life. And my family wasn't immune to daily dysfunction. In fact, we were very dysfunctional. But when we went over to Aunt Jane's house in Logan, Utah, it was unbelievable. There was lots of laughter. There was lots of really bad football. Mom wasn't nearly as critical as she normally was. You know, dad wasn't quite as down in the dumps. And grandpa, for goodness sakes, he wasn't as grumpy. And my Aunt Jane was one of these, she did everything perfectly, you know? The table was perfect, the food was perfect, she made the best pies, she made these incredible rolls, they were caramel rolls that, seriously, I can taste them, I can taste them right now. She was unbelievable. In fact, Aunt Jane, if you're watching tonight, can you send some of those? I could use those this year. Wouldn't it be nice if... Every single day was Thanksgiving. Now, I'm not suggesting that we have the whole family over every year. Good Lord, that'd be terrible, wouldn't it? But for some of us, you know, what I'm suggesting here for all of us is that, that we live each day with the same grateful mentality that we have on Thanksgiving. You know, we exhibit this attitude of gratitude. And rather than focusing on what we don't have, we focus on the things that we do have. Wouldn't that be something? You know, living each day with a heart of gratitude is a way of life. And that's what I call thanks living. So what I want you to do tonight, you've got your binder, your, uh, your, your bulletins, right? I want you to get out your bulletins. I want you to fill these out because I think this is gonna wrap up the month in a nice little bow 
and you'll have some things to really work out. Tonight, we're going to conclude our month of gratitude by learning some additional ways to cultivate an ongoing attitude of gratitude. So first, start your day out by giving thanks. Start your day out by giving thanks. That's a big deal. Um, thank God the moment that you wake up. Thank God for the sleep that you got, the rest that you got. Thank God in advance for a good, productive day. Thank God for your job or your, the roof over your head or your health. Thank God for the people in your life. Just thank God. And listen, I'm telling you, even if you're in a bad situation right now where you can't see any good, I promise you, if you thank God, you'll start realizing there are some good things. Just thank God. Psalm 86, 12 says, I give thanks to you, O Lord my God, with my whole heart, and I'll glorify your name forever. By thanking God for his blessings, first thing in the morning when you get up, you set the tone to practice gratitude throughout the rest of the day. You know, it's really hard to have a bad day when you begin the day with a heart filled with thanksgiving. My wife will tell you, I literally wake up happy every morning. I do. Because I choose happiness in the morning. I wake up and I say, God, I'm so excited for another day. I suggest you try that. Next, serve others. Serve others. I mean, that's, this is important. I want to share an account from a man who lives out Hebrews 13.2, which says, Do not neglect to show hospitality to strangers, for by this some have been entertaining angels without knowing it. In September of 1985, when Scott McCauley was 24 years old, his folks decided they were going to get a divorce. And he was taught that to be a good son, he needed to be supportive and loving to each parent and to all of his siblings. But nobody was talking to anybody. Anybody relate to that? Yeah. My wife could tell you about that when her parents went through a divorce. And it, it was... If he was nice to one parent, then the other parent would get mad. So when October came, he thought, you know, what's going to happen in, at Thanksgiving? And he, and he just didn't like the thought of sitting home alone um, on Thanksgiving. So he explains it this way. He says, Thanksgiving is not about gifts or fireworks or hoopla. It's a meal around a table where you give thanks for the blessings that you have. And you really can't do that by yourself and have much fun. So... Scott decided to put on an ad in the local newspaper. If people thought they'd find themselves alone, they, would, they could give him a call and he would make Thanksgiving dinner. That first year, a few people came and they had a wonderful time. And Scott was nervous about uh, making a mess out of the food and disappointing people. But, you know, the food was okay. Nobody died. And he didn't burn anything. So he thought, well, that's okay. Now, Scott has held... Thanksgiving dinner every year since. Now, here's, here's a note. I just read yesterday that this is the first year that Scott's not going to be able to do that. So, last, last Thanksgiving, 84 people showed up. And sometimes they're new to town, sometimes they're recently divorced or widowed. And he's, he's had people who are new to the country and didn't speak any English. Isn't that cool? But they really enjoyed his dinner. He's had poor people, He's had people come from AA. He's had old people. Um, and, and also, he always feeds the police. He never counts that in the numbers. Because you see, firefighters and EMTs, they have a place. To, they're in buildings with kitchens. But, you know, the police that are out on the beat, they don't get to eat. So he even feeds them as well. Two years ago, a woman who had Parkinson's disease came. And she, could, she was not good on her feet. And she'd been in a nursing home for seven years. She'd never been out. And somebody told her about the dinner. And she hired an ambulance to bring her at $200 plus mileage. She had a great time. And she cried when the ambulance returned to take her home. She didn't want to go home. Most of the people who come, they don't know who Scott is. They know that there's some skinny guy that's in the kitchen. But they don't even know his name. And Scott says, I think the theme of my life, everything I do could be summed up with the name of an old hymn called Brighten the Corner Where You Are. 
I hope my legacy will be that I, that I came into the world and I brightened the corner and then quietly left the world unnoticed. You see, there's always room at Scott McCauley's table. He's been hosting his, this, his free Thanksgiving feast for 35 years. Scott's learned an important lesson. When you do something kind for others and you expect nothing in return, you are the beneficiary. The gratitude that you experience is indescribable. You're blessed more exceedingly than those you're blessing. So if you've if you got things bad in your life right now, go out and bless others like Scott. The third way to continue to develop an attitude of gratitude is be grateful regardless of your circumstances. Be grateful regardless of your circumstances. We are all so fortunate to live in the United States where we have so much more than most of the world's inhabitants. Most of you had a meal or two today. If you are here, you were able to either get a ride here or you drove here. You drank some awesome coffee tonight, amen? Anybody enjoy the coffee, right? Man, that's, that's something to be grateful for. Coffee, for goodness sakes. You're able to worship Jesus without the threat of arrest. And even if you're living in a shelter, a reentry house, a rehab, or you don't know how in the world you're gonna pay your bills, you're doing better than almost everyone else on planet Earth. Keep that in mind. Be thankful and grateful for what God has blessed you with. 1 Thessalonians 5.18, we've shared this the last few weeks. Give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will for you in Christ Jesus. You know, some of you have recently gotten out of jail or prison, while others are awaiting the possibility of actually going there. Um, have, many of you are living in, in a prison of your own making right now. You're stuck in the cycle of looking at the bad in life rather than, than the good in life. You're not, you're not able to see the positives in any situation. All you can see is what you don't have, the trials and the tribulations in your life. And I want to suggest to you that you learn how to find the silver lining in a circumstance that looks a lot more like fool's gold. If you're facing financial issues, Thank God that you're able and willing to work and then do your part. Keep applying for jobs. Keep trying. And then trust God that he can and he will help you through this. If your marriage is in trouble right now and it doesn't look like that you're going, that you're going to be able to take it, your wife or your spouse can't take it anymore, um, get on your knees and thank God that you have a spouse and then ask him to mend your relationship and do whatever it takes to do that. Then do your part. Get some counseling. Go to church. Get in a step study. Go to meetings. Get busy, for goodness sakes. God can and will change your circumstances if only you trust him and you take action. Guess what? You need to trust God. And if you feel depressed and feel, you feel like you can't go on, call on the creator of the universe. Thank him for his blessings and his protection. And then go do your part. See a doctor. Get in a step study. Go to church. Surround yourself with positive people in your life. You can do it if only you trust God. If you can't stop viewing porn, Hit your knees and thank God that you got eyes to see. And then ask him to change your viewing appetite to be in line with his will for your life. And then do your part. Join a step study. Go to church. Get accountability partners. Get a flip phone without internet. And then, yeah, yeah, do that. And then here's what you need to do. Trust God. Do you see a pattern here? Thank God. Praise him in all circumstances. Second, do your part. God can't perform a miracle in your life without your participation. Hey, here's something to keep in mind. Look in the Bible, look at the miracles, and notice that people had a part in those miracles. 
You have to be a part of in your miracle. And then lastly, trust God. Listen, you've been doing it your way for how long now? How's that working out for you? Trust God. Do something different. Be thankful, take action, and trust God. Another way to develop your attitude of gratitude is share hope with others. By sharing the hope you found in Jesus and the tools you've developed in recovery, you'll be working step 12 and living out Jesus' mandate for all believers. And he said to them, go into all the world and proclaim the gospel to the whole creation. Share the hope that you've found by working the steps here at CR and the transformative power of your relationship with Jesus Christ and tell everybody who will listen. I mean, goodness sakes, get on the soapbox. Share with everyone. Your testimony of what God has done in your life will encourage others. It'll encourage them to try this, this kind of life out. Your optimism will be infectious and others will want what you have. Have you ever met somebody in, in recovery and you went, man, I want what he has? Um, one of you have. Well, that's good. <laughs> and then the last way to develop a day-by-day -day ongoing attitude of gratitude is smile more and complain less. Far too often, we choose to focus on what's wrong rather than what's right in our lives. You get to choose your response. Listen to Proverbs 17, 22. It says, a joyful heart is good medicine, but a crushed spirit dries up the bones. Have you ever met people that you just, you see them coming and you want to walk the other way? You know, the ones that go, how are you doing? Oh, it's bad. You're like, come on, Eeyore, change your attitude, right? You can either find the silver lining in a situation or focus on the downside. It is your choice. So smile. Smile. Hey, let's do that. Let's try it right now. Smile. See how good looking you are? Yeah, you, you look great. It's my position that those of us in recovery must live with a grateful attitude in good times and bad. We can't afford to allow stinking thinking to infiltrate our minds. We have to live our lives differently. We have to develop a daily habit of living with an attitude of gratitude. Having one day a year that's filled with gratitude, we call that Thanksgiving. But living one day at a time with a genuine attitude of gratitude is thanks living.
This month we've been focusing on practicing gratitude. And I ask you all to write what CR has meant to you on these gratitude cards. And, and, and you know various times you've seen the words. And here they are. Here are the words of gratitude that you've all shared here tonight. You know, when we take the time to really examine ourselves and our circumstances, we can always find something to be thankful for. By actively keeping and reading a gratitude list, we find ourselves praising God for our blessings and sometimes in the middle of the storms in our lives, and I hear one coming right now. And then by giving away what's been freely given to us, which is a relationship with Jesus and this simple program, we can shine the light of hope on those around us. Friends, I, I pray that as we go into December, um, that you have learned something this month about living a life differently, one that's full of gratitude, with an attitude of gratitude, practicing it every day. Tonight, we're going to take communion together, and we're going to focus on the greatest gift ever given, Jesus' gift of eternal life. And as we take the bread and the juice, I want you to reflect on the incredible sacrifice that was made on the cross. Now, those of you who are online, you know what? Go ahead and get yourself a piece of toast or get a cracker or something. Get some water. You don't have to have juice. Whatever it is, just get it. And let's, let's take the bread and the juice or whatever you've got. I don't care if it's a Snickers bar and wash it down with a Sprite. But let's, let's focus on Jesus and what he's done in our lives. These elements here, you'll see. On the top, you've got the little wafer right there. In 1 Corinthians 11, 23 through 26, it says, For I received from the Lord that I also passed on to you. The Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, he took bread. And when he'd given thanks, he broke it, and he said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this. In remembrance of me. Listen, this bread, the only thing significant about this bread is what it represents. It represents a Savior who gave his life for you and was beaten and broken for you so that you can be healed and whole and be in his presence one day. Father, we thank you for the opportunity to take this bread and remember what you've done, Lord. I pray that not a one of us in this room or watching online will ever take that lightly. And Jesus, we love you because you first loved us enough to come to earth for one purpose, to die on the cross so that we could be reconciled to the Father. Thank you, Jesus, for, for being bruised and broken for us. Let's eat the bread. And in the same way, after supper, he took the cup and he, he said... This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. For whenever you eat this bread and you drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Again, this juice isn't significant, is it? But it represents such precious blood that was literally poured out for you. And, you know, there was a time, and I share this all, every time we do communion, but there was a time that I used to drink to forget. But tonight, I, along with you, drink to remember. Father, we thank you, Lord. We thank you for the ultimate sacrifice of shedding your blood on the cross so that we could be reconciled to the Father through your sacrifice. You were the ultimate sacrifice. And Jesus, we don't take that lightly. Lord, you could have chosen to come down off of that cross and, and said, Father, I, I, I don't want to do this, but you willingly allowed them to nail you to the cross and die a horrible sinner's death, even though you never sinned, Lord. We love you so much, Jesus. Thank you for shedding your blood for each and every one of us so that we could be in heaven with you. Lord, we love you and trust you. In Jesus' name, take the juice. We have a lot to be grateful for, amen? Here's what I want you to do. Let's thank God for all of his, his many, many blessings. And let's celebrate recovery. Will you do me a favor? Will you stand up?
for this last song. Let's worship the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. the uh, bucket. Who's got the bucket? Oh, good, good, good. All right, we have some giveaways. You got anybody want to win something? All right, for those of you online right now, I want you to pick a number between one and a hundred. Comment in the comment box, and three of you will win a ten dollar gift card. And we'll get them out to you. Okay, so make sure you comment. All right, let's do a Chili's gift card. I think, uh, you know, I think it's 10 bucks or something. I don't know. I mean, it might be, yeah, something like that. All right? All right. Okay. 
231 639. 231. Come on now. Here. All right. Hey, Ryan, why don't you come run these cards, okay? There we go. All right. Congratulations. All right. So let's do, oh, let's do, you know what? Let's do a Starbucks. Let's do a Starbucks card. Um, it is 333-703. Holy smokes, did you win? There you go. That's awesome. All right, we've got, you know what, let's do, we're going to wrap it up with ice cream. Ice cream's the best. Um, and let's, this is Chili's Macaroni Grill or on the border, so whatever. All right. It is 231638. Come on down. Here you go. Look at that. That's awesome. Is that awesome? Or, that's what I like to see. If there's anybody faster, I want to see it this time. All right. That's great. Oh, this is, this is, this is the Holy Grail. It's $15 of DQ, Dairy Queen. Praise the Lord. All right. Three 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 seven zero seven. Three 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 seven zero seven. All right, there you go. Yes, awesome, awesome. And then here's the last but not least. Listen, everybody needs a CR Bible, right? Okay. Here's a CR Bible for one last gift. All right. I'm all right. I, oh, it is blue. Two three one five seven seven. Two, three, one, five, seven, seven. All right, there you go. All right, yeah. Thanks for spending some time with us tonight, everybody. Um, those of you watching online, make sure that you join us for open share groups at 8 p.m. Register at crfirstnlr.com. Um, and here's your leader's question, and it's also in your bulletins. What impacted you tonight from tonight's message? You know, what, what point or two that really got you? And then what three things are you most grateful for today? I want you to share about that in your open share groups. Now, make sure as you go to groups, um, you put on your masks, socially distance as you leave the sanctuary. And newcomers, please go right across the, the way over there into the newcomers uh, guest center. And if you're watching online, I want to encourage you to go to our online groups tonight. Listen, before we go to our groups, though, we need to do the serenity prayer. So let's uh, read the serenity prayer and uh, stand up if you don't mind, and then we can go. Oops, sorry. I'm a grateful believer in Jesus. I'm in recovery for anger. My name's David. David. <laughs> prayer for serenity. God grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, the courage to change the things I can, and the wisdom to know the difference. Living one day at a time, enjoying one moment at a time, accepting hardship as a pathway to peace, taking as Jesus did this sinful world as it is, not as I would have it. Trusting you will make all things right if I surrender to your will so that I may be reasonably happy in this life and supremely happy with you forever in the next. Amen.